but I'm happy to entertain if, if someone wants to make um, a comment now on the East End, um, they can do so if they wish. Councillors, uh, that's all of the speakers that wish to speak uh, on this item, if I understand correctly. Um, to get things moving, I'll move the uh, officer's recommendation. That's all. That's all. And this is you know, the, the big issue we've been talking about for a number of years now. Um, well, it's good to finally be here. I want to thank the officers and everyone for their hard work on that and thank everyone for the submissions. So I'm reading through those again today. Um, 65 submissions. Um, the vast majority of them actually varies. Uh, I think that a deferral might help. I mean, this is probably the biggest change in the town planning scheme in 200 years. We've, uh, we've gone along for decade after decade with uh, certain controls in the city. And I mean, in the last 200 years, I don't know if there's been anything more major in terms of uh, taking the lid off things and saying to people, OK, uh, let's stimulate um, uh, some debate of submission. So my, my job, I think, as a councillor, is to go through all these submissions and, and to read them, like all councillors do. And uh, I really think that some of the community submissions, such as from Fremont Society and from Fremont Park Association, they haven't been... I don't think they've been seriously addressed. I mean, what they're trying to... They're, they're not arguing that we shouldn't do anything. They're arguing that some of these likes, I think, are just, uh, are just a, touch, a touch too high. Now, now, I, as a councillor, you know, I can't do... I, I think there's so much stuff to deal with. We've got this on Friday, and there's so much stuff to deal with that um, I, I do think... Um, some of the issues that have been raised just need a bit more time. As I said, you know, it's taken 200 years to get there. Uh, this needs to be... I do think this, this needs to be carefully scrutinised um, because while we are trying to get this through and push, push it as fast as we can, um, I just think some of, these, um, some of these heights are just too high. So I've given you a copy of my um, proposal for a deferral and... Uh, I would like to test whether there's support for the deferral. Okay, uh, Councillor, you've moved, I presume. Are you moving it or are you just... I'd like to do that, please. Moving. Okay. Uh, moving your deferral. Um, quite extensive. I presume you only just draft that this afternoon. Oh, that's sorry, right. 10 to 6, yeah. yes. Well, I only spent all day on it, but uh, I didn't get the time to copy every councillor. Uh, is there any discussion on the deferral, Councillor Well, I assume the text is just a deferral. I mean, I, I hear what Councillor Dowson is saying, and I mean, I, I can understand the deferral. The argument that I, that I hear, or that I'm open to, is just this sort of idea that it's so big and complex that I mean, why not take a little bit more time? But I mean, what I guess I'm, one of the responses to that is um, there'll never be an end to that. Well, that's an argument that we can probably use every time. This is an issue, as Councillor Wilson rightly says, it's, it is very complex, but we have all the information in front of us now. And I think either, and I think we should keep, um, we, need to, we need to, we may need some modification, but I think we can where we are now, and I think if we're not going to make a decision now, we're going to make one. Now is the time for us to actually have, have, have the courage to do so. But I'm certainly, in terms of the deferral, um, you know, um, I don't know if it's necessarily going to achieve anything other than just a lot more debate about something that we've already had a hell of a lot of debate on. So, um, is there any further discussion on the deferral? Can I close if nobody else is... I think we have another comment, but it's not closed. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Look, the Mayor says that's not wasting too much time on the deferral. Um, Councillor Wilson said... We'll be back here in a couple of weeks and we we'll do the same thing. My point, I, my point is that this is major, 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 major stuff. And you don't just sort of rush it through before Christmas. This report came out on Friday. How many people in the community have had a chance to, to really soak this up and, 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 and get hold of it and read it? Can we do a report comes out on Friday? Sorry. Well, I'm sorry, but you know, this is, as I said, this is probably the biggest change in 200 years. This is not a normal front gate and goal or there's other trivial stuff we deal with. This is major, major in, in, uh, and it's got huge impacts. You're talking about 28.5 metre buildings. 
28.5 meter buildings, and, and, and Fort Knox is, is 17 meters. Um, and this is the last chance, councillors. I mean, when it goes to council, you can't say, oh, well, you know, we'll do something. Then you, that's too late. That's it. It's gone to council. Bang. This is the time for the for us to, to make a decision. So this, is, this is part of our job, I think, is to do things in the right time frame and not just, not just rush things through. And sure, people have been working very hard on this, and some people around this table uh, know everything. They know the ins and outs of this because they've been part of it. But the people sitting at the back of the room have been there for four and a half hours you know, most of the money got this on Friday. Is there any further discussion or debate on the referral? Um, I will put that uh, motion for um, decision. All those in favour of the deferral? That's against. The deferral is lost. Mr Chairman, yes. um, I don't care if people are getting tired, I know it's 10.30, but this is so important uh, that I'm, I really want to go through some of these issues. And uh, I don't think this is the trouble we get to this time of night, everybody you knows that getting tired, but, but uh, I do want to address... Sorry, sorry. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> Even McDonald's. Uh, I suppose one of, one, one of the issues that still concerns me is the great landmark for Fort Knox. And uh, where, where, where it sits in this whole development. To me, it's a landmark of the recommendation. On page 118, the height recommendation for this area is 18 metres. And Fort Knox is only 17 metres to Queen Victoria Street, and yet we're actually recommending something that is higher than Fort Knox. So, uh, I, do, I, do have, <coughs> I do have concerns particularly about Area 7. Um, and can I have a question of the opposite? So what, what is that identity code recommended on the Queen Victoria Street? Uh, I understand it's uh, it's general uh, 17 and a half metres plus or minus a metre along that full facade of that side of Queen Victoria Street from Harry Street to James Street. Yeah, and, and can I pick up on this point, no, no, pick up this point, because the local identity code does say that respect must be paid to existing heritage. So you've got an answer from the urban designer, I'm going to ask for an answer from the city architect who, who uh, as, as to the impact of this scheme amendment on Fort Knox and whether uh, it is appropriate or whether it should come back to what the Fremont Society and others have said that is 15.5 minutes instead of 18. Local identity code from memory, I haven't been dealing with this for a while, um, says that the strip between Queen Victoria Street and Beach Street is appropriate for taller buildings. But local identity code also says that heritage consideration or heritage context should take precedence uh, to decision of making a height comparable with the uh, with the Fort Knox. And I think that uh, what John Strahan said is appropriate. The buildings to, to which respect the scale of it should be slightly smaller, not slightly bigger, with some extension on top. In addition, um, the local identity code recommends not only row of tall, big, massive buildings around, around the strip, but it makes recommendations about the breakdown of the facades or the proportions of, of of the individual facade. So it goes much more deeper than just the height of the of the buildings. I don't know if it answers your question. I think the irony is that, uh, uh, thank you, uh, the area seven and eight are recommended for um, 18 metres, and yet we've already got the wool store, we've got the coal stores and all these other buildings. I mean, there's so many heritage buildings in this, in this site. All I'm saying is that, I, 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 Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, I have, Five little amendments I'd like to move one at a time and get beaten on those uh, one at a time. Uh, and I'd like to move an amendment to uh, this area seven that it be reduced to 15.5 in line with public submissions and in line with the Freedom Society and in line with my understanding of local identity code. Okay, uh, we're moving an amendment um, that area seven be, the height of area seven be reduced to 15.5 metres. We can talk about the complexity of it, then we'll come back down to heights and we'll start arguing the toss about a metre here, a metre there. You know, 
I, I really do think he's, he's kind of splitting hairs. Um, so I, I want to support it. Yeah, I, uh, I would say too, um, you know, with regard to those two areas, I mean, the reason why Area 7 and Area 8 are different is very much because uh, those areas, um, you know, Area 8 has so many um, smaller uh, existing heritage buildings in it, and there is clear recognition in the scheme amendment um, that uh, that is the case, and that is why uh, it has a whole range of uh, conditions uh, in relation to that area uh, that, are, that, that deal with the matters that the local identity code talks about. Um, so I, you know, I, don't, I don't see um, that uh, the scheme amendment, even as it stands, is insensitive to the issue of high and line. And I'm quite happy for Councillor Dawson to have a different, different point of view, but I'm not going to support that different point of view. Group 223, very quick comment on Fort Knox. That building will still be a dominant, important building from south, from England. So actually, I think this again, if it gets it right, because it, it makes it make sense that building will remain an important building, but it also says, I mean, for me, a key point is that it doesn't. It, the, the principle that tall buildings in the area must be heritage buildings is one that I agree with. And um, I think instead, what we're going to be doing is putting in high quality new buildings in appropriate locations. And that's why, again, the office has got the right to review this recommendation. Okay, so any further debate on that amendment? Well, I'd like to make a comment. I mean, I'm disappointed that Councillor Wilson thinks I'm being precious about, you know, a few metres here and there. And I'm not being precious by saying, hey, you know, that, that we should pay respect to it. We have to. We, 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 we damn well should be paying respect to it. And it's, it's so glib to say, oh, what does it matter whether we build something next to it one metre up or one metre down? We've seen this time and time again on this council where this council doesn't give a damn. And I, I just want to show you another photo to, to prove my point, which the, the man doesn't agree with me here. But look, the, the, this is what council approved uh, uh, QB1 apartments. All right, now that's right opposite the, the old Australian Hotel, which of course looks uh, totally swamped by the QB1 apartments. And here, when you look at those new apartments here and compare it to the wool stores, the officers want, I mean, it, it, Councillor Davis threw in a, a member for next story on top. And, and what have you got now? You've got a uh, QB in one apartment that doesn't even match the, the line of the, of the wool stores. Mm -hmm. And that extra one story does make, I think, a huge impact. That extra one story, to me, not only diminishes the buildings across the road, it doesn't even fit in with the, uh, with, with, with the original wool store. So this business of, oh, well, what, what does it matter, an extra story or a few metres? I mean, of course it matters. Now, Mepinet doesn't agree with me on that one. He says there are only three people in Fremantle uh, who, who would agree with me. But I think there'd be a lot more than three people who would say, hey, the hell did, why did the hell did we allow that extra story? Any further debate on Councillor Dowson's amendment? Okay, I'm um, just, we'll sum up my view. Um, if uh, height was the only issue of relevance to any of these things in heritage, um, the Eiffel Tower would never have been built. St Paul's in London would never have been built. Uh, people complain about both of those buildings. They complain vigorously. Now, I'm not suggesting for a moment that we can make the same comparison. But this concept that you cannot have some height in an area that also has buildings up to a certain point is just driven by fear. And it's driven by, in my view, the fear of the bad art. You know, moving forward uh, on uh, these heights is based on the fact that we also now have this much better approach to trying to get quality buildings, not only buildings of particular scale or height or whatever, but we have added in something significantly more important than the question of just whether it's one or two metres higher than an existing building, and that is of the quality. And so I'm comfortable um, in supporting the height um, because I believe it is consistent with all of the other elements that have been talked about. Um, at the end of the day, um, I'm also hoping there's going to be an avenue of trees down that street. And uh, for the public in the street to see that last one metre or the last two metres or the last three metres, hopefully what they will be enjoying is the 
general ambience of that street, a tree lined avenue entering into the city. So, on Councillor Dowson's amendment, put that to the vote. All those in favour? Those against? It's lost. Councillor Dowson. You make analogies about the Eiffel Tower. I don't know what the Eiffel Tower is, but the Eiffel Tower wasn't built next to the Louvre or, or next to some existing building. You know, it's in an open space. So I don't think I don't think anybody's scared of height if it's done properly and in the right place. So the Eiffel Tower was not built right up next to one of our best buildings. And uh, I'm just staggered at how we throw away, you know, all this uh, history and heritage. We have policies. We have guidelines. We have experts who come and tell us how to do things, and we just keep ignoring it. So time and time again. We keep throwing that out. I mean, heritage is not even coming into this debate. We don't even have a map. Councils don't even have a map of the heritage properties. We have to bring one along. It's not even in our agenda. And, and, and so there's no point to going through now and you know try, trying to go through area one area at a time. There are some areas that are fine, but I still think, as a community, explain that we've gone too far. So I won't be. I support extra height, extra extra height, yes, but I think we've gone too far. So I, I will be voting against the amendment and I, I won't move any more uh, amendments. I mean, you know, we're talking about bonuses for having good buildings. Every damn building should be good. You know, we're taking the lid off the town planning scheme. Why are we saying, oh, well, and if you do a six star, we'll give you, we'll give you a bonus. Well, what do you do? You know, we're taking the lid off the town planning scheme. Everything that goes in there should be top quality. What this scheme amendment is trying to do, and exactly the issue you raised right there, is that it is trying to identify those areas of the site where exceptional <coughs> quality in design is required um, and actually encouraged by presenting uh, opportunities to achieve that. Now, you know, um, what, what more can we do? You know, at the end of the day, um, what was decided, I think, by a lot of people is that. You know, it's probably damn hard to actually get that right, whether it be one story or 16 stories. What's important is the quality of the architecture in that location. And that's what this scheme has finally settled on. Look, we, you know, we want the whole area, maximum three stories, um, all super duper green, solar, fantastically designed. Yeah, I mean, that'd be fantastic. It'd be absolutely wonderful. And in 10 years' time, we'll all walk up there exactly the same as it is now. Funny old car yards and old buildings falling apart. And we have this great document of all the We're going to have great big hopes together. I mean, I like your people. It's just well, not the same thing. Councillor Dowson, you, you, you make the, the same <coughs> kind of slightly uh, extreme comments the other way. I, I think that to, to suggest that nobody sitting around this table has an interest in heritage or that other councils don't share your interest in, in heritage, I, I think it's just as extreme. If this city doesn't reclaim its sort of mantle as a, as a strategic centre, we're not going to have the capacity to fund and support the best preserved 19th century townscape uh, in Australia. We're not going to have that capacity. We hardly have it now. I'm assuming we're getting close to, to, to voting. I mean, in my sense is, especially reading through the, um, the, the many submissions, and um, is. I think what we've done here is quite exceptional because look, we're never going to get to over on either side. But I think that that balance, which we've been trying to seek, I think we've I think we've actually achieved. I mean, and look, a lot of the ideas we've got in here come from the solutions have come from here. The first uh, area which we're going to see a real, a great bunch of sustainable, high quality buildings in in this part of in this part of town. In fact, in fact, um, in terms of six-star buildings, there's only one in Perth that I'm aware of at the moment. So we're actually looking at having a series of these in one place. And I think we are really mapping out the kind of place we need in Fremont for the 24th century. Um, and also, I think, what is importantly, um, we've talked about social issues a lot, but actually the idea that we're going to provide affordable housing in Fremont for lots more people um, is, if we can't do it here, we can't really need it. Uh, but at the end of the day, you do have to make a decision, and then you have to live with that decision. And I, I know that you're feeling that it's, you know, uh, you, you can't live with the decision that, that's here right now. Well, I know that I can. I said before it might not be 100%, but I know that um, it is in the right direction. It's the right philosophical approach for that area, uh, as Mayor Peter has said, uh, and I'm comfortable to move forward with that. And I'm, you know, do I think that I'll be damned in 10 years time or 20 years time? No. Um, and that's, you know, helpful.
to me in making this decision. You might be the person that's damning me in 20 years' time. I don't know. Uh, but let's just wait and see. Uh, let's hope that something will have actually happened in 20 years' time. Um, so, is there any further debate before I put the motion? The motion, all of those in favour? Those against? It's carried. Um, obviously, that decision goes to full council anyway. Um, in case we might be doing that all again. Okay, uh, there's no more public questions.